Hi, my name is Hannah. I'm a sixth grader at North Star Middle School in the Arctic Zone, and today I am going to give you some tips on how to make And now are some popular screenwriting softwares you can use. First of all, there's Google Docs. Most of my scripts and novels are on there. You have to format it yourself, but otherwise good. And then there's Celtex. The, there's a free and a paid version. That is what I use for some of my scripts. There's a limit of two on the free version, but hey, I only need like two scripts on there anyways. And then some other ones are Final Draft, Writer Duet, Trelby, Scrivener, I'm not sure I pronounced that right, but anyways. Fade In, Kit Scenarist, and Movie Magic Screenwriter. And then there's Arc Studio Pro, which I also use for some of my scripts. It lets you storyboard, so that's really good if you want to make an outline for your script. Here's the typical layout for a single arc plot. The introduction, where things are introduced, like the main characters in their lives. The conflict arise, where you start the conflict. This part of the plot usually lasts for a while. The climax is the highest point of tension. And the return or fall is when the main character has won and is cleaning up after themselves, metaphorically and sometimes literally. And the resolution is when everything goes back to a normal, or a new normal, depending on the plot. Here's the layout for a double arc plot. The introduction, where things are introduced. The conflict, you already know that's where the climax is hinted at. More rising action, where both your viewers and your characters wonder, can this get any worse? And then, of course, things get worse, and it seems like that's the actual climax. Then, it seems like the falling action starts. Of course, you can't let that stop the antagonist, and then things somehow get worse. And then, of course, the actual climax. After that, there's the actual falling action, and the resolution. Finally. Here are some tips for writing the introduction. First of all, don't explain exactly what's happening in the entire main character's life story. Let your audience infer some. Another tip, make some kind of twist that sets your movie apart from other movies and gets your audience hooked. Some things that might be helpful when writing the conflict. Determine the kind of conflict your character is facing. Is it character versus self? Where the character is facing some sort of internal struggle? Character versus character? Where two characters who both want the same thing or want to stop each other from achieving the goal have a conflict. Character versus society, where the character is facing against society for something. Character versus technology, where the character is facing against AI or technology. Character versus nature, where the character is fighting against nature or change. Or character versus supernatural, where the character is fighting against a supernatural force of some sort. Figure out what your character wants, and then make it harder for them to get that. For example, say your character wants ice cream, but so does their sibling. That's also an example of a character versus character conflict. Another tip, make the protagonist or hero and antagonist or villain have opposing values. An extreme example would be that the antagonist wants to destroy or reset the world, and the hero wants to, or has to, save it. Make a petrifying antagonist who believes they are the hero and are just as strong or even stronger than the protagonist. Of course, make it seem like all hope is lost and the protagonist isn't ever going to succeed. I personally like to resolve the conflict at the last second to make it more suspenseful. Of course, you need to raise the stakes and make it even harder for the character. Give them something to lose if they don't win. Or even make a character who wants the same thing or all the credit. Did you know that there are actually four parts of the climax? The run-up, or the events leading up to the climax, the moment of truth, or the point the story has been going to and hinting at, the climax itself, where the protagonist defeats the antagonist, and the aftermath of the climax. Here are some more tips. Increase the external conflicts and amplify the conflicts, making an even better protagonist-antagonist clash. 
Use scene structure and editing to add tension. Use the setting to your advantage. For example, if you want a romantic scene, you might put it in a garden, or if you want a creepy scene, put it in a long dark hallway. Of course, add suspense, drama, and mystery. Falling action happens after the climax, after the protagonist has defeated the antagonist. This is where the protagonist got what he or she wanted, and now it's time to clean up the mess they created and give viewers the closure they need. Just remember that falling action relieves the conflict or tension. And of course, after the conflict, the world doesn't just stop, it keeps going. There's still stuff going on. It is falling action, after all. Try not to skip it, or your movie will feel like it ends abruptly. Anyways, here are some tips for writing the resolution. First of all, don't make much time between the climax and the end. Try and keep it to like five to eight minutes. And if you're going to make a sequel, a good idea would be be to write the beginning of the plot for the next movie into the end of the plot for your first movie.